Universal Studios Florida continues to captivate visitors with awe-inspiring spectacles both old and new, from the spellbinding wizardry of Diagon Alley to the blasting mayhem inside the new Minion Land, each corner promising cinematic adventures. Hi, I'm the Frugal Brit, and in this video I'll be touring through all rides and attractions that Universal Studios Florida 2024 has to offer, including a sneak peek of what's on the horizon. We'll start the tour on City Walk's Eastern Bridge, next to the famous Spinning Globe and the iconic Archway Entrance, the starting line for the day's adventures. Once through the palm-lined entrance and turnstiles, you'll find yourself inside the re-themed Minion Land. This new area brings to life the playful and mischievous world of the Minion characters who've completely taken over the old production central land and its production facilities. We'll begin the attraction tour with the all-new Illuminations Villain Con Minion Blast Moving Walkway Shooter attraction. The story is that Universal Orlando is to host the annual Villain Con convention for supervillains and evil henchmen. Guests are later equipped with their Eliminator X Blaster, which is basically a high-tech game controller that connects to the Universal app. The ride experience starts on a motion-based pathway, where guests battle against the notorious Vicious Six, encountering environments and challenges themed around each villain as you move along the motion pathway. This is the park's shiny new attraction, but was never intended to be a headliner for the park just to manage expectations, but it is a very convenient crowd absorber near the busy entrance to the park. Moving on to Despicable Me Minion Mayhem, which remains unchanged since the re-theme, where guests are invited inside Gru's zany residence and strapped into Minion transformation pods, then taken on a chaotic and humorous motion simulated journey through Gru's laboratory. Further into the park is the Illumination Theatre, an outdoor greeting area which hosts meet and greets with the Minions and other Illumination movie characters. Next is the new Minion Cafe, the best thing to come from Minion Land I would say, bustling with Minion themed decor and inventive culinary offerings. As covered in one of my recent videos, I'd rate it as one of Universal's best restaurants. Next we'll head north for the New York Backlot, a land that replicates the sights and sounds of the Big Apple including its meticulously crafted facades, one of which contains the Finnegan's Bar and Grill restaurant, the park's best restaurant most would agree. The New York land now contains the Rip Ride Rocket music themed roller coaster, one of the park's signature attractions. Riders will board the trains on the moving sideway, all fitted with a unique music selection system where you can choose songs from a pre-selected list across multiple genres. With your music selected, the train will launch into a sky-high climb, 167 feet up, with anticipation building every inch of the way. At the hill's peak, you can be seen from miles around the Universal Orlando Resort. Before you know it, you're plunging down from the peak, hitting speeds of 65 miles per hour behind the plaza stage before whipping you into the double take, the world's largest non-inverting loop, which gives riders the illusion of going upside down. You'll later zoom through a wall on 5th Avenue, which leads you to more drops, dives and turns before the final break run. Whilst Rip Ride Rocket offers thrills aplenty, it should be said that it's not as buttery smooth as the coasters in the adjacent park. Next up is the Transformers The Ride 3D Multi-Sensory Dark Ride, entering beneath a towering 28-foot statue of Optimus Prime. Riders board EVAC for a four and a half minute motion simulated clash between the Autobots and the Decepticons, blending high speed action and impressive simulation technology. Guests also have the chance to meet Transformers characters around the corner at the nearby Nest building. Next we have the Race Through New York starring Jimmy Fallon Dynamic Motion Simulator Ride. The pre-ride experience is as immersive and engaging as the main attraction itself with memorabilia and history of The Tonight Show. In the upper level, there's occasional live performances from the Ragtime Gals Barbershop Quartet and appearances from Hashtag The Panda. For the main ride, guests find themselves seated in a flying theatre for a 3D motion simulator experience that mimics the movements of a high-speed chase, darting around famous landmarks through, below and above New York City, extending the chase to the moon and back. In the heart of the New York backlot inside the Museum of Antiquities is the Revenge of the Mummy combination dark ride. You'll queue through an archaeological dig under the premise that you'll be touring the movie set. The ride begins slowly, passing through various chambers, with riders soon learning that the mummy Imhotep is trying to gain immortality by feeding on the souls of riders, who experience a number of impressive special effects, from flames and fog to animatronics, with speeds of up to 45 miles per hour, and a 40-foot drop, twisting and turning through the darkness. As well as containing some of the best rides, the New York backlot is pulsating with the rhythm of street performers. Outside Macy's you can see Marilyn in the Diamond Bella show, where the iconic starlet leads her talented backup dancers. Near the border between San Francisco you'll find the Beat Builders, four construction workers who pause their duties to put on a captivating percussion show using an array of tools. 
On the east side of Fifth Avenue, you'll find the Vamos by Lalo show, a vibrant celebration of Latin culture that invites attendees into a world of rhythm and dance. On Delancey Street, you'll find the stage for the Blues Brothers show, where iconic duo Jake and Elle will deliver a soulful melody of songs in their signature black suits, and accompanied by Jazz, the live saxophonist, and Mabel, the singing waitress, creating a lively street party atmosphere, encouraging audience members to dance along to their signature tunes before making a stylish exit in their iconic blues mobile. In front of the Blues Brothers stage, you also have the Sing It show, inspired by the riff-off scene in the Pitch Perfect movie, where talented singers battle it out through captivating performances, taking on hit songs that resonate through the lively streets. Heading east along the waterfront, we'll come to the San Francisco land, which captures the essence of the iconic city by the bay, with famous landmarks like Fisherman's Wharf, which is where you'll find one of the park's only table service restaurants, which is Lombard Seafood Grill. Tucked away on the pier next to Lombard is the Jaws replica, in reference to the classic Jaws ride from Amity Harbour. These days, there's just the one attraction in San Francisco, which unfortunately doesn't quite inspire the same affection as Jaws. This is, of course, the Fast and Furious supercharged car chase motion simulator ride. Visitors queue through a a replica of the crew's well-known garage, showcasing recognisable vehicles and artefacts from the movie. The ride begins after boarding the 48 passenger party buses that travel through Sullivan's garage with cutting-edge 3D projections, before a high-octane chase through the streets of LA, immersing riders into the heart of the movie's amusing adrenaline fueled world. Next, we'll head back towards the front of the park over the lagoon for Hollywood, which connects onto the Minions land. Designed to recreate the glamour and energy of Tinseltown's golden age, with nods to Beverly Hills and the Hollywood Hills and its historical landmarks offering more character meet and greet opportunities than any other land in the park. Last year also saw the introduction of the new drive-in and dance show, set against the backdrop of Mel's drive-in. In terms of attractions, we still have the Universal Orlando's Horror Makeup Show, which resides inside a recreation of the Pantages Theatre. After viewing the horror movie displays inside the lobby, guests enter the theatre for a live demonstration of Universal Pictures' legacy of horror movies, unveiling the cinematic tricks and methods employed to craft Hollywood monsters, combined with consistently hilarious audience improvisation a few doors down is the Bourne Stuntacular live action stunt show, where guests are led into a large waiting area and briefed on Project Rubicon before heading over to the 700 seat virtual surveillance observation room, a giant LED screen which creates an incredible shifting cinematic landscape, seamlessly merging with live actors and movie set pieces, easily one of Orlando's best theme park shows. If we head towards the water, we'll come to the Central Park viewing area, which is where Universal hosts its nighttime show, which used to be the Universal Orlando Cinematic Celebration, which ended its run last year. At the time of making this video, its successor is still wrapped in a veil of mystery. Many credible rumours seem to be pointing at a new show, combining water curtains with drone art. Next, we'll head upwards for the brand new DreamWorks land, which is replacing the former Woody Woodpecker's Kid Zone and aims to bring to life the beloved characters and settings from DreamWorks Animation's popular franchises such as Shrek, Trolls and Kung Fu Panda. At the time of making this video, significant construction is underway with major changes forthcoming, one of which includes the retheming of the Woody Woodpecker coaster to the Troller coaster. I suspect updates will be coming in thick and fast very soon after this video is released, so be sure to check for updates. Whilst construction is ongoing, guests can still see the animal actors on location, a family-friendly comedy show inside a covered outdoor stadium, where animals both furry and feathered perform a variety of tricks for the audience, showing how they're trained for the big screen. On the other side of the avenue is the Spongebob store pants gift shop with an opportunity to meet Spongebob and friends. My favourite thing from this area of the park will always be the E.T. Adventure family friendly dark ride. As you step inside, Mr. Spielberg introduces the mission to save E.T.'s home planet, which leads you into the Redwood Forest queue. If lucky, you'll get the chance to see Botanicus beaming down from his ship to deliver a special message. After boarding the bicycle shaped vehicles, you'll take to the air over the city, reliving some memorable moments from the movie, eventually arriving in time to save E.T.'s green planet, a ride that holds a very special place as the only ride from the park's original opening. Next, we'll head east for the Springfield home of the Simpsons land, of course themed to the fictional town from the long-running Simpsons TV show, containing recreations of Moe's Tavern, Quickie Mart, Fast Food Boulevard and other famous landmarks. We'll start with the Kang and Kodo's Twirl and Hurl aerial carousel ride, where riders can control their spaceship-shaped vehicles for a simulated alien attack on guests down below. The main attraction of Springfield is the Simpsons ride 3D motion simulator, which took over from the former Back to the Future ride. Nowadays, you'll find Simpsons-themed carnival festivities surrounding the giant Krusty the Clown head entrance. 
We're invited inside for a trip to the Krusty Land theme park. Riders are seated in a vehicle that emulates a roller coaster and taken on a wild ride through Krusty Land and Springfield, filled with gags and familiar faces, with Sideshow Bob in hot pursuit. Over to the far east of the park is the futuristic looking World Expo Land, which has seen a lot of changes in the decades following the park's opening. One of its few amenities includes the Space Age Coca-Cola kiosk. The sole attraction for World Expo is the Men in Black Alien Attack Interactive Dark Ride. As riders, you've been recruited as new agents and queue through the iconic MIB headquarters. After boarding the spinning ride vehicles, training is cut short as you're required to fend off an alien invasion in New York, zapping aliens with your own laser guns as you navigate through the cityscape to help save the city and defeat the aliens whilst competing with friends and family for the highest score. For our final destination, we'll head towards the top of the map where Amity's Jaws ride used to live, now containing the Wizarding World's London and Diagon Alley sections, the most intricately designed and immersive land Universal has ever crafted. It's London waterfront boasting authentic London-themed facades, complete with Grimald Place, where you can spot creature peeking out. Nearby, Stan Stunpike can be found conversing with guests aboard the night bus. Dominating the west side of the waterfront is a spectacular recreation of King's Cross Station, which we'll return to later in the video. Our next stop is Diagon Alley, concealed from the Muggle world behind a brick wall adjacent to Leicester Square Station. As you wander through, you'll come across a fire-breathing dragon atop Gringotts Bank, staring at you from the other side of the alley. Surrounding the bank are a number of iconic Wizarding World establishments, lining the cobblestone pathways, including the Leaky Cauldron Quick Service Restaurant, one of many locations where you can pick up a pint of butterbeer. Next door to the Leaky Cauldron is the dark and sinister pathway for Nocturne Alley, a dimly lit thoroughfare with eerie sound effects and interactive windows, maintains the notorious Borgen and Burke store. To the east of Diagon Alley, you'll find the Carkit Market section containing the Gringotts Money Exchange, where you can exchange your Muggle currency for Gringotts banknotes. There's also a stage nearby which hosts live shows, including Celestina Warbeck and the Banshees. Diagon Alley is famously home to the Ollivander's One Shop, which hosts the One Choosing Experience, where a small group of guests are ushered into a dark, intimate space within the shop for the One Choosing Ceremony, where a wand keeper playing the role of Mr. Ollivander selects a participant to undergo the wand fitting. If you decide to purchase one of Universal's interactive wands, Diagon Alley is filled with spell spots, allowing muggles to create a number of magical effects. The crown jewel of Diagon Alley is undoubtedly the Harry Potter and the Escape from Gringotts roller coaster hybrid. It features one of Universal's most elaborate queues, guiding guests through a grand marble lobby occupied by animatronic goblins. After the pre shows, you're whisked away down an elevator that sends you nine miles into the ground. Once on the ride, guests are thrust into a frenetic chase through the cavernous vaults beneath the bank, blending roller coaster thrills with immersive 3D technology as you witness Harry, Ron, and Hermione's mission to retrieve the Horcrux. For the final ride at Universal Studios Wizarding World, we'll head back to the London waterfront for the King's Cross Station, which is where you access the Hogwarts Express train ride that takes you over to the Islands of Adventure theme park. Once through the turnstiles, the queue winds through the interior of the station, arriving at the fabled platform nine and three quarters. With a clever bit of visual trickery, guests magically pass through the brick wall. Once you've arrived on the platform, the steam from the train hisses as it readies for departure next to an uncaged Hedwig, before attendants usher guests aboard. The ride is an immersive cinematic experience through projected landscapes, scenes and characters from the Wizarding World, and shadows of some sinister creatures. Riders depart at a station within the Wizarding Village of Hogsmeade and Universal Islands of Adventure which of course concludes our tour of Universal Studios Florida. For a tour of all rides and attractions at Islands of Adventure, you'll want to tap on this video.